Hey everybody, Schematist here, and I thought this would be a great time to drop episode 2 of my little mini-series, Video Game Composer's Memoir. Now this whole thing got started just because of a lot of debates that I had with my friend. He strongly recommended I do this. Every now and then it will touch a topic in the freelancing industry that's a little bit controversial, so I think it's better to open up the floor and have a discussion about it. Because between the two of us, we're very opinionated, right? We could be a little bit biased, so we need more opinions and more feedback. Now, just recently, we had a really good topic, and it was whether or not a composer should work for free. And there's a lot that went on here. And uh, before I share my, my thoughts on the topic, I, I just want to say, you know, there is no real definite right answer. Because... Whether or not someone chooses to work for free would have to depend on a wide variety of circumstances. So honestly, you know, that this person would have to sit down and strictly analyze and audit themselves in a serious way, right? So analyze their current living situation and most importantly, their financial situation. It's just the truth of it. Outline your own goals and just make sure before you decide to do it, make sure it's the right choice for you. Because at the end of the day, everyone's going to do their own thing anyway. So you have to travel in the lane that best fits your purpose. So, just to start things off, I'm going to get right into it. I think that there can be a plus to working for free. But it's very circumstantial. And the problem with this is, there are a lot of traps that can catch a composer that you have to look out for, right? If he or she agrees to do non-paid work, you have to keep your eye on the red flags. And I know this is kind of hard to explain it, so I have to use like a couple of examples. And this might sound cheesy and corny, but try and bear with me. I just want to kind of paint, paint the scene. So an example one, right? A client is really enthusiastic. You know, they have great energy and they write you one of the best emails you've seen in a long time. They've got a clear vision for their game, their storyline is all mapped out, it's the dream project. This is where it all goes downhill. Because with a little digging, you can't find a record of the game anywhere. There's no Twitter page, there's no Facebook page, no YouTube page, not even a Tumblr or WordPress like nothing zero donuts right you just can't find it but yet they want you to write a full-length soundtrack and their only incentive that they're giving you is because you would be crazy to not want to work on a game like this right it's, it's that's that's literally it you would be crazy to not want to take your time and your hard-earned resources and pour it into their project you would, you would have to do it. And this is crazy because it actually exists and it's happened to me and I haven't done it yet and I still probably will never do it. And I feel like this is probably one of the biggest red flags out there. And I think if you decide to do non-paid work, this is the person you want to completely avoid because working hard and writing music for a non-existing project is putting yourself in a position to lose and to lose miserably. And you know, a fair question is, you know, at, the, at a certain point, you can say, hey, well, um, is there a link? Is there any work in progress you can show me? And then the only thing they'll have to show you is a couple of drawings that were in a notebook that were scanned into the computer on loose leaf paper. It's crazy, but it happens. This is a complete no. Working for free, it should be done tastefully. This is not the example you want to start off with. So let's go into example two which is kind of a common case for me too, right? Like a client finds you, they look through your portfolio, and they love what they see. So, so far, so good. Now they take the time, and uh, at the end of the email, like at the, the very end of the well-crafted email, they'll request a significant volume of work from you. I don't know, they may want 15 to 20 or 20 to 25 tracks, but they swiftly follow up with, we aren't able to pay you, but you would be given credit and receive exposure. They also may give you a promise that there'll be opportunity for future pay to work if you stick around with them. Now, in this case, it may be, or it may sound a little more enticing, 
at least when you first see the email, but here are some potential loopholes that you might not initially see. So hopefully this will save you some time and possible frustration if you are interested in taking on free work. First, just simply ask what kind of exposure are you receiving? And this is not this is not a disrespectful question. This is very honest. Does this game developer have a large fan base? Or if not, do they have strong connections in the industry? Is the team well known on social media? And if the answer is like, you know, kind of hesitant or shaky or you're not sure, then just ask, in what ways am I going to receive exposure? If the developer is assuming that their game will be the next big hit and it's sure to, co to receive some kind of huge commercial success, that's a gamble. And that's a gamble that you would have to decide if it's worth it or not. Because it can be dangerous and can lead to a lot of broken hearts. At this stage, you have to be very vocal about what's being offered in exchange for your services. Because there is no guarantee that the game will be an automatic success. And if you're aware of this, then it brings me to my next point. Do you actually like the look of the project? Is this a game that you would be proud to say you worked on? Right? Now, chances are, if you're hesitant to say yes, if you're kind of leaning on the fence, you probably should not spend your time and your energy on this title. Another thing to keep in mind is that exposure only exists if there's a consistent fan base. And even then, you'll only be siphoning off those fans. And only about 5-10% to 10 are really going to take a genuine interest in your work. So you won't get a, a ton of people flocking on your account. And this is actually one of my biggest gripes with this approach, is also the lack of authenticity. When the developer kind of jumps over to the, the credit and exposure phase, they're not really trying to build an organic relationship. They're not trying to build an organic relationship. It's very mechanical. It's very, it's very basic, very, very, very fundamental, and it just stops there. And what happens is this puts you in a position to be replaceable. You are not an asset at this point. So let's say if you were to do this, you were to take on this project and do free work, even if the project were to succeed, there may not be any guarantee of payment, and there's an even slimmer chance of you working on them with a, f in a, with a future project. And this is just the case. This is the truth. Because you can do the best work possible, and because there's no contract, because it's all like word of mouth, if the game succeeds, they do not have to pay you, and they may just choose another compo composer down the line for their next couple of projects. It just happens. And this happened to me. And it, it's kind of terrible. And I, I want to avoid this happening to anyone else. It's not a fun situation to be in. And they may even block you from social media, delete you from Skype, and all kinds of things. It happens. It happens a lot. And it caught me one good time, and I'll never <laughs> do it again. <laughs> I promise that. And now, we can get into example three. Now in example three, you've got a similar situation, right? A client again comes and sees your work, they take the time to message you, except this time it's just a little bit different, right? Now here, they make clear references to your existing works, so they make sure to acknowledge your previous uploads in the past, and they are very specific with it, like they're giving you the title of your work, the the parts that they love the most, they're giving you a time section breakdowns, they might even compare your work to other popular artists, or they're trying to find some kind of uh, a common ground in terms of personality or music taste or even food taste and even gaming preferences. So now they're they're kind of touching the human side of things. Now we get to the end of the email. This is where it gets fun. They'll tell you they would need X amount of tracks and they'll inquire about your rate. Now, at this point, one of three things is gonna happen in the next couple of exchanges of emails. You're gonna tell them your rate, and number one, you may not ever hear from them again. Two, they'll say, sure, that sounds good, when can you start? And when can you have it finished? And number three, they'll honestly say, hey, look, I can't afford that, but is there anything I can do to bring value to you in exchange for your services. Now the lines are being blurred here a little bit. So the question can change from, should I work for free or should I always work for money? 
Now, I actually really do love the example number three because it, sh it, it just shows a lot of character, at least to me. Uh, some people may not agree with me, but to me, it shows character. If money is an issue and someone really wants your music on their project and they're going above and beyond to either try to meet you halfway or find something else that you might need that they can offer, I think it shows a bit of character. And this could be anything. It could be marketing services. It could be video editing, graphic design. If you need a logo, right? It, it, it's a huge spectrum. At least in this example, they're being very genuine, candid, and transparent. It's just more genuine as a whole. So I, from immediately, when I, when I find these people or when they contact me, I don't feel like they're trying to scam me or like to snake me. And, you know, and even exchanging services for service, services for services can go a long way. And it could lead to long lasting, fruitful relationships. And it worked for me, but that's a story I can probably share later because I want to stay on topic. Now, I know this option is not for everyone and there's good reason for that, right? In my case, I have a full-time job, I go to school part-time, and obtaining money from composing is nice, but it's not mandatory or critical for me in my current state. Like, it's just it's just the truth of it. But how, however, on the other side, you've got a sea of composers out there who are purely composers, full-time, and they need to eat and pay bills like the rest of us, right? This is something that I don't know why people don't understand. They need to pay bills. Bills suck, <laughs> right? And I hope they don't have to pay college loans either, because that would definitely suck. Now, this scenario is a lot harder to navigate for developers that are looking to find someone for free work in exchange or for working for services to services. It's just a lot trickier, because if I were on the other side, I'm not sure if I could manage working for free. But Truthfully, I do think that at some point, no matter which side of the fence you're on, working for free might be a great way to gain access into the field. This could build your reputation. It, you know, I don't want to say do it and this is the truth, but I just feel that way. Because if you took on more free work in the initial point of your career, what happens is you create this social proof. You create this buzz, this word of mouth. So if the next person sees you and they're questioning whether they should work with you or not, there's something tangible that they can easily look at and say, huh, this person can do it. They have the potential to last two, three, four months, six months, a year working with me on this project and it shows. And again, it's all going to depend on what project you choose to work on for free. So take what I say with a grain of salt, but at the end of the day, this is just my perspective. I mean, how do you feel about it? Would you consider working for free? Or maybe working for services? At this point, there could be a chance that some of you have already done both. So you could hear horror stories and success stories. But if you care to share, drop a line right down below. We can have a nice conversation about it. I'm sorry this video ran on so long, but thanks for watching everyone. Happy composing and cheers.